Buenos días a, a todos. Eh, bienvenidos a, al evento donde vamos a presentar el último reporte de la OCB sobre transformación digital de, de pymes. Eh, solamente os voy a dar unas breves, eh, breves instrucciones sobre cómo va a transcurrir el evento antes de pasarle la palabra a Gonzalo Rivas. Eh, ustedes tienen un botoncito con un dibujo del mundo abajo a la derecha. Ese es el botón para traducción simultánea. Hay traducción simultánea a español-inglés y a inglés-español. Eh, Gonzalo va a hacer su, eh, su, su participación en español, la presentación después va a ser en inglés y luego vamos a tener una sesión de preguntas y respuestas que podrá ser en los dos idiomas. Les vamos a pedir que escriban sus pre preguntas en el chat. Um, so, good morning everyone. Welcome to our event today. Uh, on the insights of um, the latest OECD report on SME digital transformation. Um, we are going to um, be holding the, 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 um, this event in Spanish and English, the, the introduction um, by Gonzalo Rivas, our um, division chief will be in Spanish. Um, Sandrine Kergroch from OECD is going to be doing her presentation in English. Um, and the Q&A that will happen afterwards will be held in both English and Spanish And we ask you to please um, write any questions you have for the panelists on the, the chat um, uh, in, the, uh, in, in, the, in the chat section of, of, the, of, the, of the event. Um, so um, without further ado, I'm going to um, uh, ask Gonzalo to, to give us his uh, welcome um, words, please. Muchas gracias, uh, Claudia. Good morning to everyone. Voy a hablar en, en español. Uh, Primero, agradecer a todos su, su presencia. Tenemos una cantidad bien impresionante hoy día de, de expertos, de, de hacedores de política de toda América Latina y el Caribe con nosotros hoy día. Eh, y básicamente porque hay hoy día el tema de la transformación digital, particularmente de las pequeñas y medianas empresas, es un tema muy acuciante para todos en la región. La pandemia obviamente ha acelerado un proceso que ya venía en marcha, pero que de alguna manera, producto de toda esta situación de confinamiento, etcétera, ha hecho que todo tome un ritmo mucho más vertiginoso, ¿no? Eh, particularmente todo el proceso de digitalización. Y el objetivo de este, de este evento es, es permitir que los países de América Latina, todos quienes están interesados en este tema, eh, podamos... Eh, aprender un poco de, de, del reporte que recientemente ha hecho la OSD sobre precisamente el tema de la transformación digital eh, eh, de pymes. Entonces, con, con, con la ayuda de la OSD, esto nos va a permitir mirar mejor cuáles son los desafíos que tenemos en la región. Eh, y quiero agradecer particularmente entonces la presencia de Sandrín eh, y de Marco, eh, que son de, de, de la OECD. Sandrine es la, la jefa eh, de la eh, unidad de, de, eh, de pequeñas y medianas empresas, emprendimiento, eh, emprendimiento eh, política y mainstreaming de, de la OECD en el centro de, de, de emprendimiento y, y, y de eh, pequeña y mediana empresa. Eh, regiones y ciudades de la OCDE, es un nombre muy largo, perdone. <ríe> y también está con, con ella Marco Bianchi, que es eh, eh, también un, eh, un, un, un miembro de la misma unidad y es coautor de este eh, informe. Eh, y él va a estar poniendo a Sandrina en toda la parte de eh, preguntas y respuestas. Eh, nosotros creemos que aquí hay un conjunto de temas que son súper sustanciales para discutir entre los cuales eh, nos gustaría quizás enfatizar algunos de los temas que nosotros hemos visto eh, a, a, eh, en la región, eh, a partir de todo el trabajo que estamos haciendo. Eh, lo primero que queremos enfatizar es que eh, el tema de transformación digital no es solamente un problema de eh, adquisición de tecnología. Eso es fundamentalmente un tema de eh, cómo se adopta en las empresas eh, en las tecnologías digitales, pero eh, cómo se hacen los cambios organizacionales de procesos y el ajuste de capacidades que permitan aprovechar precisamente este tipo de herramientas. Eh, por lo tanto, la evidencia que tenemos es que no basta simplemente con que exista financiamiento para adquirir ese tipo de, eh, de tecnologías o proveer conectividad, sino que es fundamental eh, proveer asistencia técnica, eh, proveer eh, capacitación y formación para que efectivamente las empresas puedan sacarle provecho a esta tecnología. De otra manera, si no, no se genera una transformación eh, digital exitosa. 
Y en ese sentido, uno de los grandes desafíos que tenemos en la región es precisamente eh, la enorme brecha que tenemos en capacidades y talento eh, digital. Tenemos una enorme eh, falencia en términos eh, de capacidades técnicas de las propias personas que tienen que implementar esto en las empresas. No basta con tener eh, capacidades externas, eh, no basta con comprar simplemente eh, eh, paquetes de software, sino que tenemos que tener las capacidades al interior de, de las empresas de entender el potencial que tiene esta tecnología, cómo aplicarla, etc. Y ahí tenemos una enorme falencia, como decía, en términos de capacidades ingenieriles, pero también de capacidades eh, de formación en las propias eh, eh, compañías y en general en nuestra eh, sociedad y en el mundo del trabajo. Nosotros estamos viendo que, eh, afortunadamente, el mismo proceso de digitalización que, que ha estado irrumpiendo por todos lados, también nos está permitiendo acceder a formación remota. Eh, nosotros hemos estado trabajando muy fuertemente, por ejemplo, en todo el tema de generación de eh, bootcamps para formación de talento digital, pero también hay otro tipo de plataformas que permiten eh, acceder a, a conocimiento y formación eh, rápida. Y lo otro es que... Eh, Necesitamos eh, tener una capacidad de actuar de manera muy masiva, porque el mundo de la pequeña y mediana empresa, de las microempresas, es desde luego eh, enormemente vasto en la región, pero también entendemos que la, las empresas son muy diversas. Hay en distintos tipos de sectores que tienen distintos tipos de necesidades. Entonces, la pregunta es cómo desarrollamos intervenciones que efectivamente permitan tener escala, pero a la vez se hagan cargo de estas diferencias en términos de capacidades eh, que eh, se requieren y, y en, en los distintos sectores de la economía. Y por último, está también el tema de cómo las empresas no solo adquieren las herramientas más básicas en esta materia, sino también nos vamos acercando al uso de tecnologías más complejas como es la inteligencia artificial, el uso de Big Data, eh, todo el tema de ciberseguridad, etcétera que son temas que eh, efectivamente son muy importantes, particularmente en los sectores industriales, por ejemplo, en la manufactura. Y nosotros ahí también como banco estamos apoyando, por ejemplo, un piloto de adopción de inteligencia artificial a nivel de clusters eh, en, en Argentina, particularmente en el sector de maquinaria eh, agrícola. Pero sabemos que hay una enorme necesidad en distintos eh, sectores. En consecuencia, eh, creo que este seminario es sin duda una, un aporte importante y, y le cedo la palabra de vuelta a, a Claudia, reiterándole la bienvenida a todos y agradeciéndole a Sandrín y a Marco por su presencia. Muchas gracias. Gracias, Gonzalo. Um, Sandrín, your turn. Um... Yes, thank, thank you very much. Thank you very much for inviting us to present this work and for having this discussion with us. Uh, I will now uh, share my screen. Share screen. Is it fine? Can you see it? Yes, we can see it. It's perfect. Okay, so let's start. So basically today I would like to present you the result of a recent OECD report on the digital transformation of SMEs. When we talk about digital technology, actually we are talking a bit about very different type of technology, more sophisticated or more basic. And when we look at the adoption rates across firms by size class, we can see, for instance, here the adoption rates among large firms, different type of technology. And we can see that some basic technology like social media or uh, using um, Uh, electronic invoices are very much more widespread than new technology like big data analytics or uh, so, um, technologies that require some integration of uh, the business activity like supply customer management uh, software. So basically there are different technology and different level of technology. Here we have the picture for large firms. Now if we look at the same pictures for medium sized firms, it's clear that there is a digital gap. And if we look at the same picture for small firms, it's clear that there are a bigger, even bigger digital gaps. So smaller the firms, the less likely they are to adopt digital technology, and the more likely they are to adopt very basic technology. What we could see also in this figure, which is interesting, is that this digital gap is not the same across all technology. And for some technology, it's much smaller. 
which means that small firms are able to digitalize some particular function more easily than others. And here, typically, these are the functions that are related to marketing and communication, social media, e-commerce, for instance, or the, the, the functions that are related to general administration, uh, interaction with governments, or electronic invoicing. Now, if we look at the same pictures across different industry, we also see there are very large difference, differences between one industry to another. Some, in, some industry, typically information and communication services are much more intensive in the use of digital technology. Uh, some other are much less like uh, construction or uh, manufacturing sectors. And again, the type of technology that are used across industry can differ. For instance, uh, you take retail trade or wholesale trade, you would find much more about e-commerce, obviously, than in construction. That makes complete sense. So now, talking about these different technology, uh, what are the benefits? Why is this not the same picture across all firms and across all technology? Starting with online platforms, for instance. What is the benefit, the main benefit of online platforms? It's connecting users. Connecting users allow firms to reduce costs, for instance, in searching or advertising. It's also a way for them to access markets, new markets, market abroad, and to extend their market outreach. So for small firms, it's a very powerful tool to become a more competitive uh, on cost uh, competition, and also to extend their market outreach. But alternately, it also helps them to access some business intelligence services that are provided by the online platform themselves. So to some extent, it's a way for them to leapfrog to new technology or to be able to externalize some part of the uh, digitalization process. So now, using another uh, type of technology, cloud computing. What is the main benefit of cloud computing? Is to be able to uh, improve, to raise IT capacity. Why? Because firms can access pay-as-you-go services. They do not need to uh, invest upfront or to incur a maintenance cost because it's done by the cloud computing uh, software provider. And then they ca this can help them again to leapfrog to new technology and to digitalize activities. Let's take another technology, AI, artificial intelligence. What are the main benefits of AI? Increasing the predictive capacity and increasing the capacity for automation. What it means, it means that firms that are able to access data and process data could improve their capacity to understand the market, increase their capacity for market segmentation and be able to be um, more efficient in product differentiation, in customization. And typically, this is a space for competitiveness for smaller firms. Market segmentation, customization, div differentiation, diversification. This is the, best, the space where SMEs can compete with larger firms. There is another benefit. It's about uh, getting a, a greater capacity to anticipate about fluctuation, fluctuation in uh, intermediaries, in prices, uh, to in anticipate uh, risk as well, and to, to be able to automate some services, basic services. And uh, I give you an example, for instance, the chatbot, when you, you contact a company online, you are able to uh, get some very basic information that usually uh, someone on the phone would provide you. And now it's a, it's a chatbot that can deliver some basic information and help the firms gain time and cost, of course, in providing this type of services. And now let's take a, a, a fourth uh, main technology, blockchain. Blockchain, what is the benefit of blockchain? Blockchain allows to decentralize the information and increase accountability. What does it mean? It means that for firms, it's a way to lower the transaction cost and agency cost, be able to better manage the supply chains and also enforce contracts. So again, it's a gain in efficiency and it's also a, a, a gain in cost, reducing cost. So now what we would like to do is to focus on one particular technology because we could discuss between, uh, during hours about this, all this, uh, this aspect. We will uh, then focus on the online platform, the first one. 
Why? What I would like to highlight here is actually that online platform could help SMEs in different functions, in, in different era of the activities. For instance, if you take marketing advertising, and here, uh, this slide has been provided by Marco, who put some example of the type of platform that can help uh, SMEs to uh, develop services or to develop the uh, efficiency in this particular business function. So marketing, advertising, customer services, it's Google, it's Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, improving um, access to market and e-commerce and, and online marketplace. It's typically Amazon or Alibaba. Uh, improving service delivery, delivery. Uh, it's Spotify or Deliveroo. Uh, there are also some platforms for accessing finance, crowdsourcing, uh, GoFundMe, for instance. There are platforms for payments like PayPal. Uh, there are platforms for uh, smart working solutions like Zoom and Teams. And there are also some platforms where you can source R&D solution, innovative solution design like GitHub. So here you can see that these platforms have, have very specific functions, but they also correspond to very specific needs in the, in the company difference. Now, let's take another small era, which is, and, and, which is important for SME, and especially in this uh, current time of, of COVID, it's e-commerce. We have seen that the business participation in e-commerce has increased. And here you see the statistics for small businesses. So firms uh, that have uh, between um, 10 and, uh, and, uh, and 49 employees. What you can see is the trends in adoption, the trends in the firms that are uh, doing selling online has been slowly but surely increasing over the past decades. And it's accelerating faster actually in the countries that were already much engaged in e-commerce. What does it mean? It means that slowly but surely, there is a digitalization of small firms making more sell online, even if they are still a minority, less than 20% uh, as a median for the OECD. But in countries that were more advanced, it's going much faster. And on the right hand side, you can see the, the diffusion curve of uh, e-commerce across country. So it's a still as I representation of the diffusion across country, where you can see that, for instance, small firms in Australia are leading, and small firms in Turkey and, and, uh, and Greece are uh, lagging behind. And you can also visualize where the small firm in Brazil and Colombia, two Latin American countries for which we have data, stand uh, in, the, in, the, in the diffusion uh, curve. Uh, what does it mean? Is uh, uh, that there is an improvement in the digitalization, but there is still a very large gap uh, across country. And there is also a very large gap across small and large firms. Here, you can see the same results for Colombia and Brazil, where you can see that the smaller, and this is again what we, we discussed in the first slide, the smaller, the less likely they, have, they are to engage into uh, e-commerce. Uh, what the, this year, 2020, has changed? The COVID-19 crisis has given a, a big, huge push to the SME digital transformation based on business surveys that have been conducted worldwide since the beginning of the pandemic, we have an estimate of up to 70% of SME uh, that have been able to adopt new digital practices to survive during the crisis. From smart working solutions, like I mentioned, Zoom and, and, uh, and, um, and a remote conferencing, to online sales and e-commerce. If we let, look, for instance, as a survey carry out in Brazil in June last year, we find that almost 50% of SMEs that were surveyed uh, were more digitally enabled than before the pandemic. And you can also see here in this chart a clear connection between the intensity or the stringency of government music or measures and lockdown and the, the percentage of uh, SMEs that have moved their sales online during the lockdown. So clearly, this this uh, crisis had an impact on digital uh, adoption by the SMEs. Uh, but that's uh, the, the nice part of the picture. There are however some risks, and this risk, um, one of the main risks, is related to the digital security. During the crisis, 
uh, the number of cyber attacks have exploded and a lot of them have targeted small firms. This is an issue because up to now, SMEs were not really a target for hackers because there were uh, less valuable targets. They have less data to hack. Uh, they were indeed less well protected, but to some extent, there were less value to capture through SMEs. During the pandemic, they have become a favorite target for these hackers because they have become a kind of entry door to a larger firms that are more valuable, more data, more valuable uh, data. And as a, as a matter of fact, they are not well prepared for digital attacks. They are not well aware of the risk. Uh, they do not invest, sometimes not at all, in digital security. And they very much rely on the external provider of services to ensure uh, their own uh, uh, digital security. So now there are also some risks and some barriers to adoption that were existing prior to the, to, the, to, the, to the COVID crisis and that are still there. It's basically related to the business environment of SMEs and to the capacity to access strategic resources. So if, I, and I don't want to be too long on this because we, we can develop very, uh, very much in each of these different era. But for instance, there are some legal uncertainty legal uncertainty, for instance, in the way they will be able to use data and the result of algorithm, uh, machine learning, where they're not very well prepared and they do not understand how this conclusion, this, this, uh, this algorithm can provide, um, uh, how the results are, are, are computed. There are also some risk of distortion in competition, especially be between uh, the large uh, digital actors or the large platform and the small firms that do not have the same uh, market power or negotiation power. They have, of, of course, remaining uh, gaps in access to digital infrastructure, the coverage, the different quality of speed. Um, we also have some financing gap. Uh, of course, cloud computing could provide a solution by reducing the cost of the digitalization, but there are still some gaps uh, some, some investment to do in skills, in organizational changes, and there are some costs that cannot be avoided, and then there is therefore a need for finance. Of course, there are just a skill gap and a digital awareness among SMEs from the manager who may not be aware of the type of technology that needs to be adopted that, as that would bring the best benefit to his business, but also to workers uh, to be able to work with this new technology, starting with AI, for instance. And then we have a, a, a range of difficulties arising from a lack of data culture, culture some technological uh, locking or reputational risk. Across uh, this crisis, we have seen an increasing gap in digital divide. And here it's a, a representation of the digital gap in connecting to the high-speed broadband. Why it's fundamental? Because high-speed broadband, it's a connection to the internet, and it's a connection to the internet to a minimum speed that could allow a transfer of data that is fundamental key for, 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 the, for the digital transformation. And you can see that across countries, this digital divide has increased from the less connected country to the most connected country. But then it has also increased between small and large firms. Uh, so what are the government doing in this respect? The first thing is we can see that there is a very large policy consensus on the need to speed the digital transformation of SMEs. And it has been very clear also during this year of crisis. But there is also very large leeway on how to do it. And this is related to exactly what I presented, the complexity of these different technologies, the complexity of the different business functions that is transforming the very heterogeneity of firms. Um, and some countries have adopted like targeted approach, targeting SMEs. Some have adopted more mainstream approach. And here we would like to uh, provide you some example across four era. One is some countries are aimed to scale up the SME internal capacity either by providing them some technology support and assistance, some training, an opportunity for upskilling, helping them to build a data culture, or raising their digital security profile. In some other country, 
It was about helping them to access strategic resources. As I mentioned, finance is key. So FinTech and alternative source of funding could be a solution, uh, business innovation and supply chain, improving the linkages between SMEs and the knowledge network, but also the digital, the, the provider of digital solution is an area where uh, government has been active, as well as providing some hubs and platform for learning, for testing, for accessing data. So basically government trying to connect the SME with this digital world through uh, the, uh, the network uh, um, interfaces and platform. Uh, third element, of course, is about the, the business environment. There is a need for a supportive regulatory framework. There is a, a role to play by government themselves in the digitalization of SMEs through their own digitalization. If you remember the first slide, the space, the technology where the digital gap between the small firms and the large firms was, was the, the, the narrower was when it is about connection, interaction with the government. And then e-government and e-services could become a channel for the transformation of SMEs. And of course, last but not least, in terms of business environment, uh, there is a need for high quality digital infrastructure and the capacity to access this infrastructure at a, uh, an affordable cost. Last, uh, last uh, type of uh, policy action, it's about governance. Government have aimed to uh, integrate this agenda into a world of government approach with long-term strategy framework, with new government arrangements, especially, for instance, in the field of AI, which is a new uh, emerging policy field where there is the need for a policy framework. So the need for strategic vision, need for governance institution, agencies, a high level council, and so on and so forth. And there is also a need for consultative instance to, uh, um, to, to, to lead, to, to steer this, uh, this governance, uh, this role of govern government approach. So what are the way forward? What uh, are the main axes that we see as uh, uh, era for policy consideration in the short term. One, of course, is removing regulatory barrier and market distortion to ensure that there is a level playing field and, and SMEs can compete uh, with a large firm. There is a need to expand the infrastructure coverage in terms of speed and reach. There is an emergency, emergency to enable SMEs uh, digital uptake but with safer conditions. So basically, uh, this is a question of the cyber security. Uh, and there is also um, a dimension which is related to the digitalization of public services. We also uh, see a need to adapt action to the specific industry SMEs operated in, but also to the specific business function that are subject to transformation. So there is a bit this double view that the industrial approach is needed, but as well, there is something to, 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 to develop and to think related to the business function. And to some extent, there are some connection between these two approaches. And last but not least, we need more evidence, more data, more comparable data. We need sectoral study business cases of success story, but also of firms that are, have been less successful and can also help us all to learn about the digital process. We need to inform the relevant actor, policymakers, but also the SMEs themselves, the large firms, the actors, the, 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 the large digital platforms that are increasingly uh, uh, active and uh, in this in this process. So that we need an international cooperation and effort for knowledge sharing. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, um, Sandrine. Um, I'm going to start um, my video um, as we go on to the um, to the question and, and answer session. Um, I'm also going to uh, introduce Marco Bianchi, uh, Bianchini. Sorry, uh, he works with Sandrine at, at OECD, and he he was a co-author of, of the report. 
Um, and um, we are, uh, we will be receiving questions in English or Spanish. Pueden hacer sus preguntas en el chat um, en inglés o, o en español. Voy a eh, empezar eh, transmitiendo algunas preguntas que, que ya nos llegaron. Um, eh, y hay un par de, 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 de preguntas in, iniciales que tienen que ver con, eh, en primer lugar, con eh, los ataques cibernéticos. Um, the question, Sandrine, is um, um, whether um, you are um, aware uh, of, of any initiatives by the big platforms such as Yahoo and Google um, or Facebook that are actually working with lots of SMEs. Um, if you don't know of, uh, of any initiative on their behalf um, to be able to protect um, SMEs working with them from um, um, uh, cyber, cyber attacks. Um, and then there's a very sec a second, very specific question regarding e-commerce um, from a, a colleague in the Caribbean. And, and the question on e-commerce is um, if, um, uh, what to do if the banking system is part of the obstacles to the development of, of e-commerce solutions and, and basically the payment systems um, not um, being able to facilitate the, the electronic transactions um, for, for e-commerce to, to happen. Um, so those are a couple of, of initial questions. Um, Marco, shall I start and, uh, and I give you the floor afterwards or? I as you prefer, if you want, you can go ahead and then I can I can add in. Okay, v very uh, quick uh, uh, comments uh, regarding the initiative by large platform. Uh, as I mentioned, part of um, the digitalization of SMEs uh, is, uh, is made through the provider of digital solution. And then when it turns to digital security, they usually, they usually uh, turn to the provider uh, with the assumption that uh, the security, to some extent, is embedded in the software they are using, in the tools they are using. Uh, for uh, the large platform like, uh, like Facebook or Microsoft or Google, what they are doing is they are providing some packages of uh, solution. Uh, during the crisis, some have been able to provide solution for free, even if it's not totally free at the end, because to some extent it's creating some kind of reliance on the proprietary technology provided by the platform. But basically, this, this dimension are included in, uh, in this solution. That said, that's not the end of, uh, of, the, of the question, because part of the cybersecurity issue is also really related to behavior. And there are some basic uh, basic practices that could be adopted in SMEs that could help lower significantly the risk of attack. And this uh, should go through people, through the managers, through workers, through training. There is a place here to, uh, for the large platform, of course, to, to intervene through the type of training they are providing, providing to their users. But there are probably also a role to play by governments, which are also, by the way, a very, uh, a very uh, vulnerable target. There have been local governments have been a very vulnerable target during the COVID crisis because they were also less well prepared. Right. On the contrary, very valuable data. So basically, there is a role to play as well for local uh, government to um, diffuse these uh, best uh, basic practices. Uh, and for the, the role of the banking sector and the payment transaction, that's all the complexity of, um, of the digitalization that I have not actually uh, developed here. It's about the complementarity between these technologies and the fact that the more you are digitalized, the more you are likely to get digitalized. Basically, there are, to some extent, a journey to start and, uh, and then a need to combine these different technologies, these different software in a way that is, of course, uh, efficient, cost efficient for your businesses. This is where the difficulty is because there is a need to identify this right, right combo of technology, the right balance between these technology. Um, Marco, do you want to say a few words? Absolutely. And in this sense, thanks. Can you hear me well? 
Um, yes, just for so on, on the three points you're saying, um, uh, of course, on the, on the point, of, point on digital security, I very much agree with Sandrine in the fact that also what we have seen, we have also had uh, organized some discussion and webinars, including these large players and asking them as well, what was uh, their, like how they were working with SMEs in order to, to, to increase the digital, their digital security. And of course, I would say that the overwhelming message that came across was that uh, you cannot outsource uh, digital security completely. So of course you can use small business, you cannot have your own IT department that deals with it. You think, okay, Google has a rather sizable one so they can do it. But of course it's, as Sandrine was very correctly saying, a matter of behavior. So it's a lot of, about training and skills within the firm and within the people that actually use these softwares so in terms of uh, changing passwords and using like let's say the the, the, the very the very basic uh, strategies that can help you be, be more secure in your digital activities in the on the point uh, very interesting point on banks uh, and facilitating e-commerce or not the financial institutions of course this is a topic uh, of uh, great scrutiny and great attention also for policymakers, I would say across the world, because of course we have seen developing the model in which uh, financing and e-commerce uh, grew together in China. So if you look at Alibaba, but not only in China, if you look also at OECD countries like in Korea, there is Kakao, there are platforms in which basically you could do both. They were both payment system platforms and offering e-commerce. Of course, now in China, we know what is happening with Alibaba and financials, they are splitting them. We are seeing what regulatory how regulation is also evolving in these markets. But in general, we can see that the, this development, I mean, again, that, that's true that this, this, the use of uh, advanced financial solution and general fintech solutions as well for e-commerce and payments, sometimes not also not through the, let's say, traditional financial, uh, financial sectors, so also using different services as PayPal or like um, companies that were born exclusively to provide uh, financial services online or digitally, that can actually um, help to find a way also for SMEs to find a way to be more efficient in your their e-commerce, both in terms of payments, but also in financing. So in the different solutions they can access. And maybe I saw also there was a the question on the impact on productivity that, uh, and on this one, maybe um, because uh, I would just want to make a point that we included, the, of course, in the report, you can see that the more specific data on this, but we have had quite a few um, research on the topic in the OECD, also from, uh, from, from our colleagues in the OECD, not, uh, not only by us, but in which it has been seen that, for example, for the, the use of online platform, and again, you will, see, you will find in the report the precise references, but there has been the first, uh, there has been a test of the impact of the use of online platforms. So in countries in which online platforms were strong, were used strongly and countries where they were not, on the incumbent in some sectors that are uh, widely dominated by SMEs. So for example, they were looking at sectors like as tourism, restaurant, taxes. So these kind of sectors in retail in which these, in which SMEs are predominant. And there we saw that in the countries in which the use of uh, uh, online platforms were, were, was more developed, actually we were over, uh, I think the time I think it was from 2011 to 2017, the increase in labor productivity was uh, one point and a half higher for the incumbents because the incumbents also had to catch up with this new solution or use these platforms in order to provide their services. And the, the other effect on productivity that we saw that uh, we, it's quite interesting is also that uh, the use of online platforms in particular seems to be as well. Um, so the impact on productivity seems also to be strongest, the smaller the firm. So what has been seen in, there is a recent paper from our colleagues in, uh, published in 2020, then, in which they were saying that small firms had an increase in labor productivity for using online platforms over a span of five years, of around 10%, while when we went to medium firm from 10 to 50 employees, it dropped to 7% and medium firm a bit larger, 6%. So again, this kind of uh, impact on productivity that we think is very interesting when looking at these effects. Thank, Thank you. you, Marco. This discussion on, on impact on productivity is, um, a, is, is very important for us. And um, we, all, we, I mean, we, we, we know of the literature and the evidence um, that, that, that has been, had been collected um, that said um, that basically the, the impact on productivity with um, ICT adoption um, will be um, enhanced um, if there's other um, reforms or capability building or changes in organization and business models, as Gonzalo was saying in the, in the beginning. 
Um, and this, um, there was that there is evidence for, for what happens with more productive or bigger firms. There's less evidence uh, about what happened with smaller firms. Um, so um, the, the, the evidence you just mentioned, I found very interesting because it, it gives you an idea that maybe um, um, connection to more basic services, as Andrin was saying, the beginning of the digital journey for the smaller firms can have an impact on productivity that's worth um, um, developing or worth uh, pursuing. Um, but it's very important to have these journeys uh, clear. You know? So, I mean, to have some idea of, of how they go. And there was a question about this uh, on the chat. Um, basically, was saying if, if you had to start with something, where, where do you start? Um, if you're an SME that's starting this, this digital, um, this digital um, journey. Uh, I start, Marco. <laughs> um, I think it really depends on the sector and the business function that are crucial or key to the, to the SME. Uh, look, when I, when I show this chart about digital adoption, uh, e-commerce is probably less relevant. Be, being able to sell online is probably less relevant for the construction firm that a retail, tr retail trade um, small businesses. So basically, this is all the complexity of this discussion because when we say digital transformation, we are putting a lot of different things into uh, uh, the same box, the same package. Uh, but now, if I would uh, put uh, some kind of spotlight on one technology, I think we should think about the cloud computing. Because the cloud computing, this is a technology which actually embeds a lot of different types of software and application with, to some extent, very targeted a specific development. And that could help SMEs actually to be able to uh, digitalize some functions, some activities uh, with lower cost. And one of the main uh, issues with uh, the digital transformation, as we mentioned, is of course the investment cost that they have to incur at the very beginning. In addition, with cloud computing, there are not, not only this software that you, you are offered with, there are kind of supports, assistance, training that comes with the software that could actually help the SME uh, move on uh, along this, uh, this journey. Um, I, I saw a couple of questions actually in the chat. I, I don't know if I can, uh, I can skip and- uh, Please go ahead, yes. They are, they are, very, they are, very, um, they are very nice questions actually. They are a bit interrelated. For instance, there is a question about the representativeness of data uh, and uh, to take into account, for instance, the informal sector. That's the reason why I was saying that we need more data and more evidence, because currently these data are collected through business survey, business survey that target firms, small, medium, and large firms, which means that all micro firms with less than 10 employees are not covered by this survey. Micro firm, it's 90% of the firms in uh, OECD countries, and it's even more in less advanced countries or smaller countries. So basically we are missing a very large part of the business population and we are missing probably the part of the population that is less, less at ease in digitalization, in digitalizing uh, activities. When we discuss about informality and the informal sector, we uh, actually are working now, I mean, it's never stopped. We have this report on digitalization. We are now moving to the next report on the SME and entrepreneurship outlook that is actually dedicating um, uh, a full report, the full, uh, the full outlook to the question of COVID and its impact on SMEs. And one source of vulnerability we identify during this, uh, this crisis is informality, the informal sector, because these firms are typically the type of firms that are less likely to access finance, not formalized means that they are less likely to access government support during the crisis. They have also uh, a, a skill gaps where they are less um, uh, likely to, to be able to uh, identify this technology and integrate them into the activities. So we need more data. We need to cover the micro data. We need to better understand this informal sector and how we can help this sector to move on uh, on the digitalization. 
Digitalization can also be a way for them to formalize their activities. And uh, we need microdata. We need microdata because we need to understand each enterprises as a single entity, and we need to better understand what is going on within the enterprise. Now, this is not just about data. It's about also experience. It's about also uh, practices. And this, this is why I was saying that we need business cases. We need sectoral case studies. We need a dialogue. We need a dialogue and we need to exchange and allow uh, SMEs that are not digitalized, that are not digital savvy, to exchange with SMEs that are already more advanced in the process, with also SMEs that are completely digital intensive. And we need to uh, understand what have been these steps, these technologies they are adopted first, the type of changes they had to implement when they, 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 they take on this technology, and what works and what did not work. And this is the reason why, uh, and I will <laughs> give the floor to Marco because he will uh, be able to say much more than me. That's the, way we, the reason why we have this digital for SME initiative. Yes, thank you very much, Sandrine. That's a perfect assist uh, for, the, for discussing about this initiative. In fact, it's true that um, Building on what Sandrine was saying, of course, it's uh, um, for us. It has been really a, a key, uh, a key topic for us to have a better understanding through an open discussion with the uh, with the industry and with the, I mean both with governments. But let's say this is more like our natural interlocutors. Of course, we are, we are as we are an international organizations, but also with the industry across OECD countries and beyond, in order to see how this uh, this process is evolving. And that's why we launched in 2019 an initiative that is called Digital for SME that is organized by us in the OECD in cooperation with the business at OECD, so which is the, let's say the representative of business associations at the OECD. And uh, uh, importantly, in this initiative, we have also brought in, uh, so of course the SME, the, of course, the OECD governments the, and the, the SME associations, as well as international experts from academia and in general, what we would say are our um, usual partners. But also we decided to bring in this initiative as well, the large players, so the large tech players. And at the moment we have uh, Facebook, um, Microsoft, Amazon, as well as Kakao, Wix, uh, Vodafone. So some large players that actually play a, very, play a very key role in digitalization of SMEs. And so for us, they are a very important interlocutor in, in order to understand how this how this process actually happens and of course this this is something on which we have a uh, we've had some representative from latin american countries that have joined up to this moment but of course this is very much open so we invite you to reach out to me to me to us in case you're interested in this dialogue you can find my information online but in general we also think that this is a, a, a good way for us it, both to gather different evidence uh, to, to gather evidence directly from the industry but as well also to understand understand better what is uh, what are the key factors that are that are impacting the digitalization of SMEs across countries and on this maybe to just to conclude on what uh, Sandrine was saying on the on what we would suggest to an SME to start out one a very brief point which relates to the presentation is that as you saw in the presentation there was a uh, uh, Sandrine's presentation, there was a very high usage and like smaller gap in the use of um, government services, so business to government, so relations with government through digital, uh, digital means. And we have seen, and also with many of the SMEs we have discussed, that actually the possibility to do their administrative and I don't know, from filing taxes to, to different permits in a digital way, so to start uh, talking digitally with your government so, so through digital means with your government often this is a very a, a very first step because you start to have to use this kind of emails you start to have to use this kind of this kind of services online and that's often a first step and then this opens to different technologies as it could be for social I, I take an example for social media of course it is one thing to start with creating a page with general information about your your SME your business it is a different thing to then uh, go deeper in that and create a full digital strategy mark digital marketing strategy so in this sense as well it's of course it's a matter of get get getting hands dirty a bit by a bit but in this also governments can really play a very important role Thank you, Marco. I'm, I'm going to um, uh, ask you a question. I think um, it's related to, to some of, of, of the questions we've received in the chat. 
And that has to do with um, um, the interventions we need to do that need to be um, done at a very big scale because of the number of firms and the, and the size of the gaps we are facing. Um, and, and this has to happen in a context in Latin America where um, uh, the, the, as we were saying, the, um, um, uh, the digital capabilities are very low, um, digital, digital skills are low um, in the, at the firm level, at the, at, from the adopter side. Uh, but also from the supply side, uh, we have some constraints. We, we don't have so many um, a, a technical assistance providers that are there uh, with the right skills to support firms in this transition. Um, even some, um, in some countries, we even have uh, constraints on the supply side of technology providers. So um, in this context, how do you suggest um, a, we, a, a program to promote um, digital uh, adoption in, in SMEs in, in, in this would be in a typical Latin American country. How could you um, uh, focus this? How what would be the approach you recommend? Uh, yeah. As, as, you, as you prefer. Uh, supply side constraint is uh, um, policy targeting the supply side is one of the dimension of the answer. When we talk about diffusion here, we have talked a lot about SMEs, so the demand side, diffusion, absorptive capacity, infrastructure, connectivity. But one of the large, um, yeah, one of the dimension of the answer is really much the supply side. So there is part, and uh, we didn't develop in the PowerPoint, uh, but there is a, uh, a large number of initiatives in government, actually usually government address both sides at the same time, supply side and demand side. And there are a large number of initiatives aiming to uh, finance uh, R&D innovation in order to develop some, some solutions that are really much targeted to SMEs. Uh, then, I mean, today with digitalization, there is less and less frontiers. So solution can also be developed in country with more uh, supply side capacity and be then uh, exchanged across border. Then there is also a dimension here that could, that could uh, be uh, explored. Uh, and of course there is um, the connection, the match between the demand side and the supply side. And there, there is a, 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 a space where government could play the role as facilitator in helping SMEs to uh, get access to this, this market, this solution, and connect with the providers. Not necessarily, uh, it could be local providers, but it could also be national or international providers. Uh, on this, if I, if I might, might add just you know, a small point, it's, um, I, I very much agree with Sandrine and on this, it's also a dimension that has been again discussed in our, in our network about how it's the supply because it's true that the supply side is often a very a very key key part of this. And there are uh, again there are different approaches from government in the sense that there are governments that do digital strategies in general for all firms that are trying to address everybody. Other governments are again in our report we go a bit more in details about this that actually decide to target specifically SMEs or specifically SMEs in some specific sector in order to be more effective. Again. There is not, uh, of course, a silver bullet that is good for everybody. But in this sense, uh, we see also that in the supply side, it's often like this role of facilitator of government. It could be to uh, ease an, uh, SMEs access to the service of large firms, so the, 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 the services that are more used worldwide or internationally. But there is also a big role of SMEs as supply side. So the SMEs that are working with other SMEs in order to implement their capacity and to help each other out basically in this sense. So it's not only SMEs getting to large providers, but it's also in between SMEs. And we have some also associations of companies that, of SMEs that do precisely this, so IT SMEs that support other SMEs. Perfect, thank you, Marco. Um, there's a, a follow-up question um, if, um, on the, this um, development of service providers, um, the supply side of, of the equation. And um, the question is about if you know of any strategy or program to develop these capacities. Um, I, I, in the report, you you, um, you mentioned and you go over more detail some of the programs that are being implemented in, in OECD countries. 
Um, and and uh, at least uh, the German program, um, the Go Digital program, seems to have a focus on this sort of technical assistance and uh, um, and, and supply side um, delivery. I don't know if that's a good example, maybe to to mention. Um, and then I'm going to ask you a, a follow up question um, that's uh, also on um, a, on on evaluation, on impact evaluation, and it's and it's referring to this um, these platforms um, that are this self paced. Um, digital transformation online courses like um, Coursera or Udemy or, 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 or the sort. Um, and do you have any, um, any information on, on, on impact on the use of these platforms um, or, their, or their success or their um, productivity in terms of guiding the, the, the SMEs in their digital um, transition? We, we are starting to do some work on this actually. Um, so it would be for us also very interesting to know if you're aware of um, anything um, regarding this specific uh, intervention. Maybe something if you want this time I can start, so otherwise it's always. <laughs> so it's just about, so of course, this is um, the, the example in Germany, I think it's a, it's, a, it's a good one, especially because the Suda they have focused quite a lot on these. And it has been something that has been going on for the last, uh, I mean, in different countries in Europe, but in Germany, the, all the discussion about Industry 4.0 and in accompanying SMEs to find the, the right solutions and the right supply side, uh, which are provider of solutions that were digital solutions that were useful for their business in manufacturing, but not especially manufacturing, but not only there has been quite crucial. And of course, this, um, this pass across, uh, like usually they are, they're supporting like in, in the Go Digital, uh, let's say in the Go Digital uh, policy initiative that we cite, they targeted um, firms with under a hundred employees with balance sheet below 20 million. So let's say it's small to medium, but also, but. Uh, the areas they were touching were very differentiated. So it went from IT security, digitalization of business processes, as well as digital marketing. And in this sense, they were trying to connect them, what we were saying before. So governments as facilitators, so more than trying to provide these services, they were trying to connect these firms with the right consultancy or providers, usually German providers, but in general, let's say in the European single market that could provide this kind of, uh, this kind of solutions. And maybe on on the second point Sandrine but because I mean the other one we are talking about skills on this and I can just uh, very briefly I don't think maybe Sandrine knows more than me on this but I don't think we have um, already like also from my colleagues structured works on uh, um, I, I know that some of our colleagues in education department are working on it on Udemy and this kind of like massive online uh, online courses that can um, uh, that can provide for sure these kind of interesting skills to SMEs one thing is that uh, what we see is that there are sometimes it's uh, uh, most of these courses are offered for free to the SMEs, but still they are not picked up that much often because it's um, I mean there is a barrier even before it in understanding if I if I as an SME entrepreneur if I need uh, to to do it to apply a digital solution at all so there is let's say a barrier before getting to these courses so once you get to these courses already of course they can provide good information and there are many large providers uh, again uh, large companies that provide as well free training of course this one provided i don't know i think again about uh, amazon for example as a very large program across countries uh, for uh, smes uh, so for what they call vendors so for smes on their platforms of course these courses are for free but somehow they are related to the to the service offered by the platform of course so they are for free, but there is sometimes some a kind of capturing of the SMEs that then do these courses in order so that they use the the, the services provided by the platform. So in general, I don't. I mean, at least I'm not aware of already advanced studies on this on the on the impact of this. Maybe Sandrine, you have more. Uh, regarding your first question about raising the capacity of the supply side, uh, uh, Marco mentioned Germany as an example. Australia has also an um, interesting initiative where they, they have a call for proposals to identify some mentors, advisors that then are uh, responsible for uh, coaching and mentoring uh, some SMEs that uh, have um, a nice or promising perspective, I would say. Um, regarding the, the access to training, uh, it's uh, currently we, 
our, our teams didn't work on this issue specifically. That's the reason why it's difficult to provide a, a very clear answer. Uh, in this space, I mean, uh, my, my first reaction would be that the government intervention, so we are not talking about the private sector providing tech training to SMEs, but the interventions of the government sector is very diverse in the terms of the type of instrument that, that can use to help SME train uh, their people. Uh, it could be through vouchers, it could be through tax incentive, it could be also uh, through uh, pools that pool the, the need of, uh, of SMEs uh, in order to reduce for them the cost of accessing, uh, of the, accessing this training. So considering the variety of instruments, uh, it, this would require some very uh, specific analysis by type of instrument, which make, of course, uh, this is a, a whole project by, by itself. In fact. Thank you so much. Um, uh, we have um, more questions, but unfortunately, we're already over time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to forward these questions from uh, Anna, Carlos, and some other Silvia's uh, questions to our panelists, um, and we'll make sure we can we can continue the dialogue. We we are certainly on on the same boat here. Um, mm -hmm. Many of the questions that were raised, uh, we're seeing day to day in all the programs we are doing um, with with the countries in in the region. Um, we as IDB are also working with several countries trying to gather data, uh, evidence, um, and, 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 put, uh, and, and, and be able to answer some of the policy questions that, uh, that we have discussed today. So we look forward to, to continue um, working with you and, and the Digital for SME initiative um, and to try to find um, maybe another, um, another um, opportunity to get together um, and keep on sharing um, best practices. Um, thank you very much, Sandrine and Marco, um, for, for being here with us today. Um, I encourage everyone to, uh, to, to read the report. It has lots of very detailed policy uh, information on, on programs that I think is very useful. Um, and um, I hope we'll see each other soon uh, and keep talking about these interesting topics. Thank you very much. Muchas gracias. <laughs> Muchas gracias. Thank gracias. you very much.